Hello everyone and welcome back to another epic installment of Velocity Lake, the Planet Coaster series that I upload to YouTube every Wednesday in which we construct the theme park Velocity Lake and look at this, here we are at episode 62. Who'd have imagined it would ever go on this long? But here we are nonetheless, and uh, as you can see, I've already been, begun construction of the main central point of today's episode, which is the expansion of our warehouse district. Uh, we had like a sort of a mini three-episode uh, mini-series a few weeks ago in which I built the smaller warehouse district, but... It's not very big. We'd probably need something a bit more substantial for a theme park the size of Velocity Lake. So this episode, we're going to extend it. We're going to build this big area just here, and it's going to be it's going to be bigger. But basically, that's that's how I'm introducing this episode. And it's going to just be one episode. It's not going to be like the previous warehouse area we built, in which it's all kind of stretched over three episodes. Because although this was a it's, it's a bigger complex overall it's a much quicker process because we're going to be we're going to be duplicating a lot of the assets that we've already built and you know it was only i think it was like 38 minutes by the time i finished cutting up all the footage which you know it's pretty much an acceptable single episode length and i feel like if i were to split this up into shorter episodes it might seem like i'm just trying to milk this series as long as I can really so thought you know what let's just make this one long episode so yes it's a fairly lengthy episode but you know I think it's fairly interesting nonetheless a lot happens we are constantly constructing various different warehouse buildings and some of the contents therein because one of these warehouse areas well it's not really a warehouse it's a big sort of open space so we're going to be needing to put some props and general storage stuff uh, in it and uh, obviously We've only got that little path servicing this area. I'm going to make that look a bit more substantial and have a proper road infrastructure leading up to this warehouse area. So that's pretty much the episode introduced. Now comes the uh, the onset of the blind panic in which I have to now think of things to talk about for the next 36 or so minutes um, that, um, that I haven't already talked about just then. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to cover in this episode before I go off on one of my inevitable random tangents. I'm trying to think. Uh, I know we're going to be doing a little bit of work on the white roller coaster, you know, the B&M Giga Coaster, and there will be a POV at the end of this video because it's been a while since you guys have got to ride on that roller coaster. And, you know, I've done repeats of POVs in previous episodes, and I always think it's worth showing POVs for roller coasters we've already built just because, you know, the skyline of Velocity Lake is always changing so the ride experience is always evolving with each episode that passes so i think it's just nice to show and especially in the case of the you know the bnm giga because it's so tall it covers the entire park and you get epic views of the entirety of velocity lake so it's a really good uh, roller coaster to show repeat uh, povs of every so often so here you can see me constructing, this is the largest warehouse on the new lot. As you can see, it's basically just a clone of the warehouse in the previous warehouse district, but wanted to make it look a little bit different, so we've gone for a much more simplistic look. We've not got those uh, window dormers on the roof, it's just one giant red corrugated iron roof. Uh, made using those wooden plank pieces, best pieces in the game, don't at me. Everyone, I think, will agree with me that those wooden beams... I don't know what I'd do without them. I think I'd, I would I wouldn't be able to live. I, I wouldn't be able to live with this game. Those wooden pieces are great. They are just so versatile because unlike a lot of the other wooden beams, they don't really have a wooden texture. Like, I guess they kind of do, but it's smooth and it's painted. So you can pretty much use them for any application and just dress them up so it look like they're made of metal or indeed if they're made of wood or anything else, really, any other material that you can think of. These wooden pieces, you know, they've always got your back, right? When life's got you down... When things aren't going your way, these 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 wooden beams, they'll be there for you when the rain starts to fall. Uh, I don't remember the rest of the lyrics to the Friends theme, so I can't really continue with this joke for much longer. As you can see, we've built a little extension of the warehouse just here. This is the open area part I was telling you guys about, so that's why there's no walls underneath this thing. Obviously, it does look a little bit odd just floating here in complete defiance of the laws of physics but we can address that in just a second in fact i've started addressing it now because i spent so long introducing this topic uh, i'm just using these scaffolding pieces i'm not sure if they come with the base planet coaster game or if they came uh, as part of the ghostbusters dlc i'm 99 percent sure they were added 
with the release of the Ghostbusters DLC, but I'm not sure if they were just... Oftentimes when Frontier releases DLC for this game, they include a few bonus items to go for people who don't want to pay for it and just only play the base game. And I feel like these might have been included with the update that brought the Ghostbusters DLC, but they were made available to everyone as part of the base game. But who knows? I don't really know. So don't take anything that I'm saying at the moment as gospel. I could be way off mark here. And, uh... Yeah, well, I guess um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that's substantial that's happened that's relevant to talk to you guys since I've got quite a lot of video left to fill with commentary. And I guess I do have stuff to talk about in a way. It's kind of it's kind of sad, really. Not sad, but I don't know. It's a bit of an end of an era in my life because as of the last couple of days, I have completed the construction of Velocity Lake. For me, it's completely finished. And, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of a bit emotional, just like zooming out and looking over the park and just seeing, seeing it all there. It's like, oh, I never, I never quite thought this day would come. I've been building this park since probably February or March 2019, so well over a year. And I feel like so much has happened over the course of this theme park. So many things happened in my life, just generally. And just to guess in the wider world, you know, 2020 happened in the lifespan of this park. And so I look back at various parts of the park and I can relate them back to whatever I was I was doing in my life at the time. And it's kind of like, yeah, it's it's over now. I mean, it's not technically over for me because I still have lots of videos to commentate over and footage to edit together. So I'm not left Velocity Lake just yet. But as far as me with my builder's hard hat on, it's pretty much a done. Like, there's a couple of I's to dot, T's to cross, there are no staff hired, the park itself is not open, and I don't think there's even a guest spawn point, so a couple of things like that, but there's no buildings or rides to add, so yeah, okay, a bit of a bit of an emotional one, that one. Uh, I have started editing the footage together for the next episodes. While I would love to just release all of them at once, uh, because I could technically do that, although, well, I'm currently recording the commentary for episode 62, so I could only release 62 as of me saying this, but I could release probably one a day for the next couple of weeks or so. But the thing is, first of all, YouTube's algorithm likes channels that upload with some sort of consistency. Uh, the second reason, most of my subscribers don't watch these videos, so I'd be, kind of, I'd be kind of annoying my core audience who don't want to watch Planet Coaster videos by spamming their sub boxes with Planet Coaster content. And uh, also because I kind of want to give myself a head start with working on the sequel to Velocity Lake. Because yeah, I don't, I want, I've decided, I know I've said guys that I've been umming and ahhing about if I'm going to continue Planet Coaster on this channel because it's kind of an old game now, but someone in the comments, I can't remember their username because it was so long ago, but you know who you are if you said this and you're watching this now, hopefully. Uh, someone said, you know, Matt, you complain that you're a bit worried that Planet Coaster is an old game to continue uploading videos of, but Kerbal Space Program came out in 2013 or 2012 and you still make videos of that. And I'm like, touche, my friend, touche. And we are probably going to get an influx of new Planet Coaster players very soon because, of course, the game is coming out on consoles. Good Lord knows what that's going to be like. Uh, if you're umming and ahhing about getting Planet Coaster and you might get it on console, don't. I, if you've got a PC that can run Planet Coaster, I would strongly suggest getting it on PC. And that's not because um, I've got a bias or anything like that, and it's not because I'm all elitist and all that, but I genuinely think Planet Coaster is one of those games that will be a bit not very good on console. Like, I take no shame in saying that I don't like Kerbal Space Program on console. I think it's the clunkiest thing ever. Uh, sorry, squad. I know you gave me a copy of the game for free, and I'm very grateful for that, but I haven't played it for more than, like, five minutes before I realised, ugh. I hate it. It's just one of these games where you kind of need the keyboard and mouse to get the full enjoyment out of it. And um, this is probably the more major of the points, really. Uh, I can't imagine it running particularly well. Like, I've got a pretty powerful PC. I think at the moment I've got a Ryzen 3950X, uh, a 20, 2080 Ti graphics card, and 64 gigabytes of RAM. So a pretty overkill YouTuber PC uh, by any measure. And uh, it does chug. I think Velocity Lake very rarely gets above 30 frames per second. So I dread to think how my uh, PS4 Pro <laughs> would handle it. And, you know, that's still a pretty good console. If you bought, if you had, like, a stock PS4 Slim or something, then I guess it might die. So 
I don't know what Frontier are going to do. I don't know if it's easier to optimize on consoles because on PC you kind of have to engineer it for lots of different, uh, you know, hardware. Whereas on consoles it's always the same architecture, so you can optimize it a little bit better. I have no idea. I will be the first to admit that I know nothing about anything I'm talking about, really. But specifically in this case, uh, I will be the first to admit that I know nothing about programming or optimization or just coding in general. So I don't know if this is complete rubbish. But you know, maybe, maybe there's a way they can make the game run better uh, on consoles because they know exactly what hardware is going to be running the game. But I am, I am skeptical. I think if you have a PC, even if you've got a PC and a console, and your console is the better machine that plays games, I still think PC is the way to go because of the keyboard and mouse. I know you can get, I don't think you can actually plug a keyboard and mouse into consoles, but. I don't know. I feel like most people's consoles are plugged into a TV. Uh, that's what that's where mine is plugged into anyway. And I think you know TV living room setups are a bit more awkward for keyboard and mouse people. I don't know. This commentary has kind of taken a few different twists and turns, hasn't it? Um, yeah. So back to my point where we, before I got onto this massive tangent. Yes, Planet Coaster is coming to consoles very soon. They say they're saying holiday. 2020 uh who knows how realistic that goal is obviously the uh, the covid19 situation has put a pin in a lot of people's plans so who knows but i think they're aiming for a holiday 2020 release so you know a lot of people will hopefully start playing the game so my channel will stay relevant again uh, i know there's a guy at my work actually who's um, planning on getting planet coaster for his xbox uh, and he's been playing a lot of city skylines on his xbox so i guess he's used to playing games like this with a con with a controller uh, so he's excited to play that so I, I know one person dave if you're watching hello he's probably not watching <laughs> um anyway yes uh so there, i guess there is a subset of people out there who can manage with a controller, I guess I'm just so used to keyboard and a mouse that I find it really hard to transition. If controller is what you're used to and it's less of a big deal for you, then more power to you. In fact, I envy you, quite frankly. Uh, yeah, but yeah, um, this was kind of a, a, a subtopic of a bigger topic that was, yeah, Velocity Lake. It has completed construction and there will be a park tour uh, and I will be releasing this park on the Steam Workshop or uploading it to Mega Upload or whatever it's called now like I do with my Kerbal Space program craft files. Not sure yet, but either way, no matter what, I will be making this park file available to the masses, to all five of you watching this video. Uh, so you can look forward to that. And in terms of the episodes, I have actually... Over this weekend in the UK, it's been it's called, it's what we call Bank Holiday Weekend. I don't know if we have if you guys have this elsewhere outside the UK or something similar, but uh, a few days, a few weekends a year, I think it's like five or six weekends a year, uh, you get Monday off as well. So it's like a three day weekend, and this is one of those weekends. Uh, so I'm currently recording this on a Monday, but over Saturday and Sunday, I sat down. I said, right, I'm not going to procrastinate. I'm just going to dedicate this weekend to planet coaster so i spent the whole of saturday like probably eight or nine hours on saturday just playing the game solidly finishing the park then on sunday a little nice cold glass of maker's mark whiskey and i just edited all the footage together and it was very very boring but it was it was good because i got it done and now it's just i don't have to worry about editing planet coaster footage so all i have to do now is do all of the commentary so the reason I'm going into this much detail is a roundabout way of saying I now know exactly how many episodes are left. So this is episode 62. So you know, uh, after <laughs> I don't know why I felt the need to state the name of this episode again, but we're on episode 62. The final episode shall be episode 70. That's right. There is only going to be eight more episodes after this one. So mark your calendars. Eight weeks time will be the epic conclusion of Planet Coaster. Uh, in fact, actually, that wasn't originally the case. It was the case. That wasn't originally the case. The actual last episode in which we build stuff and, you know, contribute to the construction of the park is episode 69. But I didn't want the, that to be the final episode because then all the comments would just be a joke about, haha, it's a funny number and that's how many episodes Velocity Lake is. So episode 70 is going to be the park tour. And a lot of people, you know, have wanted to do another me to do another park tour in a similar vein uh, to the park tour I did in Neptune Park, which is, of course, the previous Planet Coaster series I made on this channel. And a lot of people wanted the return of Beth, my roller coaster phobic girlfriend. So uh, she'll be coming along for the ride, literally, because there are rides here. 
I, I think. I don't know. I, I've, I'm sort of... I'm just going to tell her that that's what she's going to do, regardless of whether she likes it or not, because I'm, hopefully she won't like it, because then it's funnier. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she can go along, so it will be a big, epic park tour. It'll probably be quite a long video, all things considered, because there'll be a lot of POVs to do, and Velocity Lake is a very, very big park compared to all my other parks I've done before. So what I might do is a sort of bonus episode 71, in which it's just sort of a musical uh, summary of everything, so I wouldn't show any POVs or maybe just a couple of POVs, but just a general sort of cinematic pan around to music. So it's quite punchy, it doesn't drag on too long, in a similar sort of vein to the overview I did for uh, Mirror Lake and Crimson Tower, I believe, which are both theme parks that I'd quite like to revisit actually, because I re I realise, I realise, I realise that uh, there may be a little bit of a, a hiatus after Velocity Lake because I won't have anything to do in Planet Coaster. Now I have started work on the sequel to Velocity Lake. Those that follow me on Twitter might be might be aware of this, but I posted my epic schematic blueprint. It looks terrible, but uh, I, could, I could put it on screen, actually. Look at that. Isn't that... Isn't that just... That's probably how Brunel designed things, let's face it. <laughs> so yes, I very much channeled my inner six-year-old when coming up with that plan, but it makes sense to me. And that's what matters. I mean, the blue is like a lake uh, slash river. Red is like pathways. The yellow are roller coasters. The black is monorail track. Uh, it's very messy. It, it makes sense to me. I mean, I'm just going to get rid of it on screen because I realize the more I talk, the less it probably makes sense to everyone who isn't me. But it's a good plan nonetheless. It's going to be similar to the Lost Lake in that it's going to be lots and lots of water. I don't want to call it like something lake again, though, because we've already had Mirror Lake and now we've had Velocity Lake. I feel like it's too much of a, recur of a recurring theme in my Planet Coaster parks, in terms of their names. So I was thinking of a few different things. I was thinking maybe uh, something Lagoon would be cool, maybe Looping Lagoon, because I do adore my alliteration. So something like that. But if you guys have any idea for, like, it's kind of a marshy sort of layout, like, I don't think it's got any more water than Velocity Lake does. But looking at what I've got right now, which I won't show you pictures of, so... I can retain, I can, I can, I can, I can protect you all from spoilers, but also I'm not quite sure if I'm going to go with this layout just yet. But yeah, it feels like there's a lot of water, despite the fact that I don't think it's any more water than Velocity Lake has. Maybe because Velocity Lake at this point has so much infrastructure over the water and immediately like right up to the edge of the water that it kind of masks just how much water is in Velocity Lake. But I think it'll be a fun challenge. I kind of, I kind of like how Velocity Lake is sort of working in spite of the horrific terrain that it's built on like it's a completely impractical place to build a theme park but it kind of works i like all the fact that there has to be loads of bridges everywhere and this is going to be what loopy lagoon will be as well but like i say I, it's a working title it's a working title i mean uh, i was about to say it but um, velocity lakes working title was forest parks so if you go back to the previous episode and ever catch me saving the scenario i'm usually saving it as forest park because i don't know the plan going into Velocity Lake, and the plan that I think I've succeeded in now, uh, was to have it sort of set in the middle of a big forest. So in the final episode, or at the very least, the penultimate episode, will be me planting loads and loads of trees everywhere. Lupe Lagoon uh, is, I guess it's going to be a lagoon, but there's going to be lots of bridges, lots of artificial structures over the water. Uh, it's going to be really fun. I'm really excited. Um, so that's going to be kind of what we do for the next Planet Coaster series. So it's confirmed it will be going ahead. I know I did say to you guys that I was umming and ahhing about whether or not it'd be worthwhile me continuing with this series, but I have decided definitively, because I've already started recording footage for it, that Planet Coaster will continue being a staple of Matt Laum. Uh, it will continue being a staple, staple, but I'm sure that the comments will still be filled with people saying, oh, so you don't make Kerbal Space Program videos anymore, even though... I don't know. I mean, I've uploaded Planet Coaster every Wednesday since 2017. So I guess you can't win with some people. But yeah, no, I'm really excited to show you guys Loopy Lagoon if and when it ever gets here. Now, quickly before I forget to talk about it, can you see the path? How it doesn't match the ground terrain just there? Uh, it's because I've got the wrong asphalt color there. Like there's two shades of asphalt in this game. There's one that's kind of this very dark black and there's one that's the exact shade of asphalt that the asphalt path type is. So it's really, really good for masking paths, that sort of thing. The reason I'm using the 
uh, darker coloured asphalt just here is so I can more easily see where my paths are being placed whilst I'm still editing the park. But when I'm done with Velocity Lake and I'm ready to just start finishing the things off, I'll quickly go into the scenario settings menu and change the asphalt texture that I'm using there to the lighter ones so that it blends in with the path really well and we can, can you know maintain the illusion that this is actually part of the tarmac around it rather than just a path placed over some ground texture. There's a little uh, overview of Velocity Lake in almost its entirety just there. It's, it is very, it's getting very hard to fit the entire theme park into one shot these days but got a little overview just there and that's also, we're looking at a bit of an overview of the entire warehouse district now. All the warehouses are constructed. The only thing we need to do now is, like I say, populate the the, uh, the outdoor warehouse as well as that sort of outdoor bit with the fencing around it. We could fill that up with some stuff. I think that's what's in the thumbnail, actually, that part. So you've got that to look forward to. And we're also going to be building a little brick office building as well, like we did with the previous warehouse district. We had a little office there, and I feel like, while wow, that looks really good. I'm happy with how that came out. It's not really big enough to service both warehouse districts and in the grand scheme of this theme park, it's probably lacking in terms of its size, uh, in terms of how much office space a park of this magnitude would realistically need. So we're going to work on that um, once we've done this bit. <laughs> And yes, what are we doing in this bit? I was—I uh, didn't really know how to uh, sort of border the uh, path just there. As in, when I say the path, I mean the road that the little car drives along. And I did play around with this sort of pavement piece just here. Uh, I did have to check the footage then to make sure I hadn't just accidentally looped the footage and started showing old stuff again because I experimented with this earlier, couldn't get it to work. But I guess whatever I was doing at the time, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this again. And as you can see, it didn't... It didn't really turn out that great, so you can see me trying in vain to make it look a little bit better. The problem is, is that when you zoom out, it kind of creates this sort of gridded effect that looks a bit naff, you know, where the, the pavement squares have got big square holes in them, which looks looks a bit naff. I uh, mean, it's fine up close, but as soon as you zoom out a tiny bit, they become very, very visible. And this warehouse is very much meant to be background scenery, like it's not, you're not really meant to zoom in on it and have a look around because the main focus is the theme park. So it's kind of really important that it looks decent from far away, which at the moment it doesn't, at least it didn't with those pavement pieces. So as you can see, I deleted them, I deleted them and uh, decided to go with this approach instead, where we just sort of flank that pathway with this yellow curbing just here, the in you know, the head cannon version is that this isn't actually curbing. It's paint It's paint on the ground, but you can't do that in Planet Coaster to this level of finesse. So it has to be done with curbing pieces instead. I don't really know why I went to so much effort because my plan was to change the color of the ground asphalt. Uh, and so it matches the pathway. So it's not a huge deal that we have to get the path bordered like this. But I guess, I don't know, maybe at the time this was recorded so long ago. I think the footage you're watching now was like recorded in late March. So I'm having to scratch my head trying to think about what was going through my head back then. All many, many, many moons ago. Completely different time back then. I mean, this is all pre-lockdown, pre-space this week. The hit new series on this channel. So yeah, lots happened since then. So it's kind of been pushed from my mind exactly what was going through my, you know, my internal process. So I'm just sort of trying to cobble together, trying to recall, trying to refresh my memory as we go along, which is, of course, probably not the best approach to making these YouTube videos. But eh, what are you going to do? It's worked pretty well so far. I ain't going to stop now. Not for Planet Coaster. Uh, OK, so now we're doing some little greebling on the building. I thought it might look a bit more realistic to have some floodlights because this thing would be operating at all hours of the day, I would imagine. Uh, a lot of the heavy lifting and warehouse access would probably be done outside of park opening hours, which means might be happening during the dark or dusk or dawn. So it's nice to have these floodlights just to ensure true crew safety. Make sure everyone can see safely and um, they can access the innards of this warehouse just here. But speaking of the innards of that warehouse, there are currently no innards. We need to put some things inside it, which I thought I was going to do there. It would have seemed like a really epic transition, but I guess I've once again been made to look like a fool through my own actions. But uh, we'll be working on that sooner rather than later, I promise you guys. Uh, I must admit, I th I'm surprised by how long we've spent placing the buildings just there. I thought most of this episode was the stuff that went that goes inside the warehouse district. But that's what I get for having to just think about vague memories I've got and just a very quick skim through the footage before I start just rambling about rubbish to you guys. Hey, here we are, filling in, populating the area with stuff. And shipping containers, they're a pretty easy way of, you know, 
filling up a shipping area. <laughs> like these have all been unloaded off a truck. I don't know what they would what would be inside them. Roller coaster parts, um, vector engines that Lown Aerospace is smuggling in. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and as you can see, we're using my uh, my custom trucks that we used in the previous warehouse district and custom trucks in the very uh, lazy sense of the word, like I just took the dump truck and then put a box around the back of it to make it look like a, a proper big lorry. And, you know, I think it's a pretty convincing illusion. So um, I'm going to stick with it. I realized I talked about that at the wrong point because when I placed them just there, I wanted them to actually look like dump trucks to think that, you know, our theme park probably needs its own sanitation department. They've got their own trucks. But here you are. Here we can see. That's what I meant. This is what it is here. Those are dump trucks as well. But they bought, they've got the box truck thing surrounding the back portion of them. And I think it looks pretty uh, pretty convincing. Especially when you paint the cab a non-dump truck color, as in the dark green. And then as well, I thought we'd put some fire trucks on here as well. And I made them blue because I like being different like that. And I don't know if it's... um. If it's like a code, like if it, a red fire truck is like a proper service vehicle and these won't be proper service vehicles, they're just privately owned. So is there like a rule that you can't make them look like a real fire truck? So we have to paint them a different color. I know that's true with stop signs. Like uh, everyone, when people visit to Hawaii, they get really excited because the stop signs in Hawaii are all blue rather than red. And the reason for this is for a red stop sign to exist, it has to be done like by an official department. You can't just make a red stop sign. And in Hawaii, a lot of the infrastructure is private. So the private firms, they have to kind of, they will need to put stop signs in for road safety, but they can't put red stop signs in because that has to be done by an official department. So instead, they use the blue stop signs to kind of denote a stop, I think. I mean, in my, in my stop sign trivia, I will admit, is not what it used to be. But I'm sure it's something to do with that. Like a lot of stop signs in Hawaii are blue. And I don't know if there's a similar rule for fire trucks. There probably isn't, to be fair, because they are designed to fight fires. And uh, I feel like it's acceptable to have them the same color. I don't know. But we could just make them blue because it looks cool. And it's a cool talking point when Lown Aerospace show investors around the park whilst we're trying to scramble for funds. And hey, the Lown Aerospace flag is blue. And the fire trucks, they are blue also. And maybe there's something poetic in that. <laughs> Here you can see me filling up the warehouse in, again, the laziest way possible. I just decided to take loads and loads of gimmicky items and just filled it full of that. Like, yeah, we have these items for various events we do around the year. Like, maybe we use those sort of boats when it's Chinese New Year. We get them out on the lake, stuff like that. And maybe we have that tank that was like an old prop from the Rapids ride that we've since retired. Same with the airplane as well. Stuff like that, I don't know, but, you know, it's stuff that we have here. We didn't want to get rid of it in case we want to use it again in another project coming up. So we'll just stick them in the warehouse. And it's all the stuff that's a bit too big to fit on the interior of the warehouse and doesn't really need the same protection from the elements that stuff inside the warehouse might need. For example, I don't know, roller coaster track for an upcoming roller coaster. Although, you know, sad face, there will not be any more roller coasters in Velocity Lake. The park, as I say, is done for me. Uh, so I'm really, really excited to show you guys uh, how this eventually ends up turning out. Uh, there's still a few things to do, don't worry. We still have to place some flat rides. In fact, we're placing a flat ride in this episode. Ooh, exciting. Can you can you believe it? Uh, you probably can, but <laughs> we're placing a flat ride, but there's going to be a bit of a catch to it, which is pretty, pretty exciting stuff, maybe. I mean, it was in the thumbnail of this video, so probably not that surprising, but uh, just to keep... Got to get that viewer retention up, you know what I mean? He says 28 minutes into the video. In fact, to be honest, I did say that I briefly skimmed through the video and I'm fairly sure it was like the 30 minute mark at which I complete working on the warehouse and move on to another project. So I guess we're nearly at the end of this little this little warehouse odyssey. Um, do I have any closing thoughts? Probably not. I don't really have anything to say. We've kind of you've kind of seen it. We've I've kind of got bored talking about it so we can just move along, I guess. We can't move along just yet. I mean, hopefully I'm right and that there's only 10, 1 minute and 10 seconds left to talk about with this part of the video. It's going to be a bit awkward if we get past the 30 minute mark and then I'm still working on it, but hopefully not. Although I haven't placed the flat ride yet and I'm sure, I'm sure I placed the flat ride now. I mean, this is another problem. Oh, here we are. Here we go. So I said, you know what? Let's place a flat ride here as like a, a ride that was retired or something like that. So I went with this one here because it's really, really easy to just disguise that worker's booth. And hey, now it just looks like 
an abandoned ride. We I mean, not an abandoned ride, like a, a, a retired ride that just sort of sits out here. I did have to make it all black, though, so that no lights would shine from it, because even when it's closed, it will emit lights, and it probably wouldn't be that realistic to have it hooked up to the grid when it's not being used. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was kind of a nice little touch, having that little flat ride just there. I don't know what it's called, revolving rocket or something. I have no idea. I just said the first thing that popped into my head. I know it's not that. But the, that ride is from the, I think it's from the Vintage Rides pack. I don't think it comes with stock Planet Coaster either way. But yeah, place out there looks pretty nice. And now we're about to hit the 30 minute mark. We're about to see if my brief skimming ahead was correct. And it was not. We're still working on the warehouse. Although I am doing fairly, you know, finishing touchy sort of things. Um, oh, I've zoomed out now in a very dramatic sense. Could that really be it? Okay, this is embarrassing now. I've cleaned it up. Oh, no, we're moving away. I'm placing street lamps around the little road that goes around the back of the park. I refrained from placing street lamps when I first placed this path because I wasn't sure if I was going to have any more warehouse districts along its path, which obviously we've now placed. I wasn't sure if we'd be doing anything else. I thought, let's not put down any street lamps that will get in the way if we do want to build anything else. But now I've decided, you know what, we've got a pretty substantial warehouse district now. It probably doesn't need any further additions. We can call it a day there place the street lamps. I'm also going to place a little safety feature just here. You can see that the B&M Gigas track comes very, very close to the road just here. So I thought I'd add these little safety signs just here. These will have a, like a piece of metal going across them. Here it is. I'm building it here. This is the exact height of the track. So basically, if a tall lorry comes through and it's too high to fit underneath this gap, it will hit that sign instead of hitting the track. I would rather pay for a new sign than pay for a new track, especially if the car is going along it, and then we have to, we probably have quite a substantial lawsuit on our hands just there as well. So we've got these signs here just to prevent any vehicles that are too tall from going underneath that roller coaster. A little safety feature. I was quite proud of that little touch. So yeah, I think the car was quite, there was quite a nice little touch to add to that road. I did mean to go toot my own trumpet, twang my own banjo, so to say. There's a, I don't know. I don't know what else to say, really. Uh, now you can see we're back in the warehouse district. So again, I must have done a terrible job when skimming ahead in this video when trying to determine when things would happen in the video. But uh, I don't think I'm doing anything else. I don't think anything else need, really needs doing. In fact, I do know now I've, I've just noticed that the brick. <laughs> this is great. I'm just like staring at the footage. Oh, yes, I haven't done that yet. So I guess I'm going to be doing that soon in the video when most people like people like Silverette, they take notes before they do these commentaries. So they know what to talk about. Always keep things relevant. And then there's me. Hello. <laughs> Just a complete mess of a commentary all the way through. Uh, but I do know, I do, I do, I do notice that the uh, the brick office building has that big square area behind it. And that's going to be like the communal area as well as a sort of back of building storage zone. And I thought it'd be nice to put some picnic benches there, lights, people to sort of sit down, socialize, eat their Cornish pasties for lunch. Uh, so that's going to be there. And I will, will be placing some picnic benches there at some point. I'm not certain if it's going to be this episode, but we will be, do we'll be doing it at some point before the series ends. <laughs> Very dramatic way of saying we're going to be doing it at some point, but there you go. Now, uh, the B&M area is looking, as in the B&M Gigas area, is looking pretty bare at the moment. And I did say from the get-go that I wanted it to be surrounded by trees so that the actual layout of the ride would be occluded by, you know, all of the foliage. So you can't really tell what the layout is from the ground. So it, it gives the ride a bit of a mysterious layer to it because it, although it is the defining ride of the Velocity Lake skyline, maybe as is the case with the RMC uh, hybrid coaster as well, but it's either that or this, have the really iconic look that dominates the skyline of Velocity Lake. So there's kind of some irony in that, that yeah, it's the defining feature of the theme park skyline, but you can't really tell what it does uh, from any vantage point in the park. It's always a little bit obscured by trees. Anyway, that was my idea for the ride going for when I first did it. Now we've kind of built all the structures around it and I fenced off all the areas I want fencing off. We can now actually go ahead and execute that plan and surround the track layout with lots of trees, bushes, that sort of thing to not only fulfill the original goal I set out to do, which was to hide a lot of the track's layout, but also because I think it really enhances the on-ride experience to go dipping in and out of the ground because there's a few tunnels and also the forest as well it's kind of like a big adventure it's really really cool uh, I, I think it's really cool anyway and um, I was really happy with how it came out actually so that's another reason I wanted to show a POV 
of the white roller coaster at the end of this video just to kind of show you a how the velocity lake skyline has changed and obviously how the actual white roller coasters on ride experience has changed because i think the trees do substantially change how the ride is like what kind of ride it is uh, so i'm quite excited to see what you guys think of that as well uh, we will do a quick pov that isn't in real time as well just to kind of make sure that the trees aren't clipping into the track or you know getting a bit too close to the rider so if someone sticks their head their hand out they might hit a tree branch and cause all sorts of damage going at high speed so i'll do a quick uh fly through in which we just check to make sure that all the trees are not getting too close to the track which is something that's very very easy to do in planet coaster and then we'll show uh, a POV in real time footage once all that's done and i think you know we are rapidly approaching that point here we go so we're going to quickly fly through the layout really fast looking for any sort of points in which trees are getting a bit too close for comfort i know the first one is after this treble cleft element just here there we are oh so again not a huge deal because as soon as the train goes through it it will just chop those dramp branches away but that won't happen in planet coaster they'll just always stay there because there's no collision or you know destruction physics for trees so we have to just quickly shift that out of the way and then we can get back on the train and do some more inspections although i did oh yeah i did notice as well that although it's probably fine on that little corner just there that tree did get a bit too close a little bit close than i would like it to get so quickly did that as well and then we can get hop right back on that train and zoom along again looking for any other instances where branches get a bit too close and there you can see as we reach the final straight of the ride there's this quite a quite obtuse <laughs> uh collision spot just here actually i'm surprised i didn't notice that when i placed the trees so we could shift that out of the way and it looks like that one just ahead of it as well is a bit too far a little bit too close for comfort as well so you can just check that and then it looks like it you know the rest of the ride once once you've got over those two undulations just there we're back in the actual main area of the park just here so no risk of collision with trees and stuff and well there we are that's that's everything we need to do in this episode really we've done the warehouse we've finished working on the white roller coaster i'm gonna let the pov play out without my commentary just because i think it really adds to the experience maybe uh so i'll pick up when it ends and we can quickly wrap the video up then And break run. So yeah, that's that's the ride there. So I think it's a substantial improvement over what it was. I hope you guys agree and have enjoyed, you know, watching the warehouse district come together in this episode and indeed, you know, the finishing off of this ride come together in this episode. Um, yeah, if you'd like to watch more episodes, there's a link to the full playlist on the left-hand side of the screen. The right-hand side was chosen for you by YouTube's recommendation algorithm based on your viewing habits. Uh, I think I've said my piece now. Like I say, I really hope you enjoyed this episode and you're enjoying the final few episodes of Velocity Lake. I'm going to leave it there. I will see you when I see you.